First up. First up, we have the Cubot Pro. Um, so I think we have the original Cubot. So this one is kind of like the same thing. You plug a micro bit in and you get motors and sensors and there's a you know sonar for distance and, and two wheels. Um, the big update with this one is you can now use an 18650 battery, which we do not stop, but you can get them on various online sellers or uh, sometimes I think in some hobbyist shops. Um, and you can then uh, use it as a rechargeable battery pack so you don't need an external battery pack. Um, so we're starting this for the people who are comfortable and okay with getting this other external battery and uh, plugging it in, um, keeping in mind that uh, we do not sell that battery ourselves. Next up, we have some ESD plastic tip tweezers. Um, so these are plastic tip, so just be aware that they're not for hot air rework and don't get your soldering iron tip too close to them. But they're ESD safe and they have like these soft replaceable tips, which some people might like. Um, so good for uh, picking up components. You can show them really fast on the overhead maybe. Whoops. Hold on. It's got leaked. So this is my pair. Um, it's got, it got a little bit melted and damaged because I was experimenting like, what happens if you do heat it? Turns out you can't. Um, but these are um, nice uh, and delicate. So they're good for dealing with um, components where you don't want metal tips for some reason and you don't want to uh, the possibility of scraping or scratching them. Okay. Next up, we have a new BFF for Xiao and Cutie Pie boards. This one features the BNO055 9 DOF sensor plus the BMP280. So it's a two for it's in like 10 or 11 DOF, I guess. Um, what's nice about the BNO055, as you see here, it will just give you quaternion or Euler, this is Euler angles out immediately. You do not have to do any fusion. You do not have to keep track of your error. You don't have to do your magnetometer calibration. It does it all for you, um, which makes it a little bit more expensive, but means you can use any processor, which is great. People really like that for robotics and uh, motion detection. The second thing is the BMP280 on there is a barometric pressure sensor. And you're like, well, what does that have to do with the 9DOF? Well, you can use the barometric pressure sensor for altitude detection. So you can not only tell the X, Y, and Z coordination in space, but also how high up you are. If you pair this with a GPS, now you can like pretty much identify anything perfectly within the confines of uh, Earth's atmosphere, which would be kind of cool. Um, and it's a little BFF board, so you can just plug it right into the back of your cutie pie, or you can solder it directly onto the back if you like. It's got little castellated pads even. Um, but we like to use little skinny um, uh, stacking headers to make it a nice compact uh, okay. package. But, uh, you know, a lot of people want to do motion or maybe you want to make you know, the tiniest little drone. Uh, this would be great for that. Thanks, okay, next up we have the TSSP 77038. The 038 stands for 38 kilohertz demodulator. Okay, so this is an interesting chip because a lot of people are like, oh, it's an IR remote receiver. Yeah, it is, but it actually does a little bit more than that and a little bit less than that. So we're going to show off our IR receiver in a bit. But what a demodulator does, it doesn't have any brains. Like IR receiver chips usually look for and try to, you know, understand whether it's an IR remote signal and they only pass valid IR signals from like a remote control. This doesn't do that kind of filtering. It will pass, you know, anytime it sees any 38 kilohertz infrared signal at like 940 nanometers, it passes the demodulated signal along. Why would you want to use this? Well, IR remotes, like I said, you have to, it has to, like, you can't send a continuous signal uh, of IR remote uh, on an IR remote. Like here you have to like stop and you send it again and you see the little blips. If you want to use a break beam sensor that is modulated so it's not as affected by ambient light, if you want to do a proximity sensor that bounces modulated IR light, this is more for that kind of experimentation with modulated IR light you could use this with a remote control, but honestly, I don't recommend it. Um, I recommend getting an IR remote receiver instead because that'll actually do like the demodulation for you, but uh, and and filtering for you. This is more for like science experimentation um, where you want to mess with IR light. Okay, and start the show tonight. Besides you, Lady Ada, our team, our customers, everybody who makes this community go is. Dun, dun, dun. The IR receiver board, um, so that goes along with the IR demodulator. This board is specifically designed for people who want to do infrared remote projects. Uh, you can see, like, you know, you press a button and it's like, I've received this code. 
So we sell in the store like little breadboard friendly infrared um, receivers. The problem is, is that you can't mount them easily and you have these like little thin legs that you then have to solder wires to. What's great about this is that you can plug in a two millimeter JST connector and then you could plug into a board and you can see there's like the wiring is very simple. Um, another thing that's nice is there's a little red signal indicator LED to let you know that it's received signal and there's two receivers on there that you can select between uh, depending on whether you want horizontal or vertical uh, coverage. So if you go to the overhead, I can, I have a prototype here. It's green, but otherwise it's the same chip. Um, so the first thing is, oh, it's really bright. So let me pop that. One moment. Okay. Uh, first off, there's two receivers. There's a vertical and a horizontal. Um, and that's because maybe you want to have something that's like edge mounted and you want to have it pointing out or something uh, flat against the wall and you want the signal to have as much coverage on the horizontal plane. So between these two, you get, you know, you obviously don't get coverage on the back. Although this one does have a little notch and like this is translucent. So you could, you probably could get some signal even if it was um, connected from the back. There's a switch to select which one you want to use. You can't connect them together because if they have different signals, they will fight each other. And so you have to select which one you prefer. Um, but on the final version, oh, if you go to uh, this photo, um, oh, I mean, uh, I apologize, I mean this one. Uh, on the back, you see it says IRH, IRV. Uh, if you want, you can get the individual signals from each one. If you if you have two infrared uh, inputs on your microcontroller, um, as well as the signal, which is the selected output. And then, okay, so can you go to the overhead again? I forgot I had a prototype. And then, um, you know, another nice thing, let's make this less bright, as you can see, when you send um, messages, the signal LED goes off, lets you know it was received. And then I just have a little example code here. What's the max distance for IR? Um, I'd say up to, you know, 25 meters if you're lucky. It kind of actually depends on the um, transmitter, not the receiver, right? The receiver will, any signal you get, it'll work. And um, this will probably work about 10 meters away at the most, maybe like, you know, it's best before 10 feet. It's meant to be like a, a room remote. Um, but we have an IR transmitter uh, dongle that we sell. Um, and, you know, it's very high power. And if you use it, yeah, you'll definitely get like 100 feet plus, no problem. Um, okay, so this one, as we press each code, each code is being decoded. And it's like telling you, you do have to, you know, the output is the demodulated signal. It has to go into a microcontroller that has um, that has an infrared receiver. So in this case, I'm using CircuitPython. Um, Arduino also has IR receiving. Just make sure that you use the right pan and the right library. You have to decode it like this is an NEC remote. So this board doesn't do any of that like, oh, I have decoded and to also tell you what the protocol is. It just sends the bit stream out. And then your microcontroller or uh, microcomputer will have to actually convert that into which code and which button was pressed. All right, and that is new. New, 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 new.